Hello, I'm Chris Light. Welcome to Teachable Moments. This is the final segment of my four-part series on spiders. Today we're going to learn about spiders and some of their relatives. We're going to learn about tarantulas, harvest men, mites, ticks, scorpions, and pseudoscorpions. But first, let's enjoy a bit of spider comedy with the crazy-eyed jumping spider that I had promised to show in a previous video. I had fun watching this comical jumping spider on the leaves of a passion flower vine in my mother's yard in Florida. I was fascinated at how it could change the color of its eyes. It was almost as though she was watching me. I was interested to learn that female tarantulas can live up to 20 years. Tarantulas hunt at night for prey that includes insects, especially grasshoppers and beetles, but they will even eat small reptiles. Fall is mating season for the western desert tarantulas. During a trip to New Mexico in October several years ago, my husband and I were excited to see this large male walking along the trail in pursuit of a female. Since the tarantula was moving too fast for me to get a good picture, I asked my husband to put his foot in front of it to slow it down for a few seconds. It's a good thing he isn't afraid of spiders, because the next thing we knew, he ran up his pants leg. Fortunately, tarantulas are not as scary as they may look. If they do bite, it is similar to a wasp sting. Some species of tarantulas are able to deter predators by flicking the urticating or irritating hairs on their body. These hairs can irritate the eyes, nose, and mouth of the predator, and in some cases they can cause a fatal reaction. Harvest men, better known as daddy long legs, are arachnids, but they are not spiders. Like spiders, they have eight legs, but that's where the similarity ends. Their cephalothorax and abdomen are fused, so they have one body part instead of two. Harvest men lack silk glands, so they don't spin webs or make a drag line. The second pair of legs are the longest of the four pairs. They contain the sensory organs. The next time you see a harvest man, watch how it taps those legs, testing its environment. These legs are like the antennae of insects. They are sensitive to smell, taste, and touch. Surprisingly, those legs also contain the spiracles for breathing. If these legs are lost, the harvest man will die. The other legs, however, are expendable. One or more can be dropped if the harvest man is threatened by a predator. The dropped leg can continue to twitch for up to an hour. Dropped legs cannot be regrown. There's a common urban myth that says daddy long legs are the most poisonous spiders in the world, but their fangs are too small to bite a person. This is false on all accounts. First, they're not spiders. Second, they don't make venom or poison. And third, they don't have fangs. So if you hold one, it's perfectly safe. Females, should they be called harvest women? They have a smaller body with longer legs. Male harvest men have a larger body with shorter legs. It looks like this lady is enjoying this fellow for lunch. These two harvest men are munching on a caterpillar they found on a limb. Other foods include insects, worms, snails, aphids, flies, mites, earthworms, fungi, and even bird droppings. But sometimes they become somebody else's meal. Like spiders and other arachnids, harvest men have to molt their exoskeleton as they grow larger. Notice the discarded skin on the lower part of this fern frond. Many years ago, I found a cooler that had been left behind after a kid's soccer game. Rainwater had collected in it, and I could see tiny specks floating on the top of the water. 
I noticed the specks were moving, and when I looked more closely, I could see hundreds of tiny insects called springtails. Then I saw little black spheres with eight neon orange legs. They were predatory mites that were feasting on the springtails. How many mites do you see in this picture? Here is a mite that I separated from the rest. I enjoy finding red velvet mites when I'm hiking in the woods. These beautiful red mites are commonly seen on rocks, plant leaves, and on tree trunks. The bright red opossumatic coloration deters predators, a warning that they are distasteful. They may be small, but they are important for a healthy forest ecosystem. By eating small insects that eat fungi and bacteria, the mites stimulate the decomposition process of leaves and twigs on the forest floor, hastening the production of new soil. The leg arrangement of these mites is different than others. Note the two pairs near the head and the two pairs toward the back of the abdomen. These mites are sometimes called rain bugs because they often come out after a rain. The female red velvet mite lays her eggs in soil and when the larvae, when the larvae are big enough, they'll crawl out of the soil, find a harvest man or some insect, attach themselves to it, and begin to drink the blood of these animals. These larvae only have six legs instead of eight. The larvae you see here are feasting on the blood of leafhopper nymphs. They will drop to the ground when they have drunk their fill and then become adults. One night while checking my moth sheet, I saw a shiny black beetle called a patent leather beetle, also known as a best beetle. I was amazed to see several small brown mites crawling on it. I thought they might be parasites, but I learned that they are called phoretic mites, meaning they just hitch a ride on the beetle and do not harm it. This particular species of mite is attracted to only patent leather beetles, perhaps by a chemical cue. These beetles live in rotten wood. It's thought that the mites eat fungi in the wood. This beetle is so small it can only carry a few mites. Does this make your skin itch to see these little critters? As far as arachnids are concerned, ticks are very high on the icky scale. Ticks are ectoparasites, meaning that they feed on the outside of their host. When ticks bite, they burrow their barbed mouthparts into their host, then secrete a substance called cementum to more firmly attach the mouthparts in the head. Next, the tick regurgitates saliva that contains neurotoxins into the bite area which prevent the host from feeling pain. An anticoagulant in the saliva thins the blood, making it easier for the tick to drink the blood and engorge itself. Have you ever heard of being full as a tick? As they continue to drink, ticks' bodies can expand to the size of a small pea when fully engorged. Yuck! Lone star ticks are easy to identify due to the white dot on the abdomen. They can carry many diseases, including ehrlichosis, heartland virus, southern tick-associated disease, and tularemia. It's always important to check yourself for ticks after you've been outdoors. Several years ago, my son noticed ticks on his ankle after mountain biking in the woods. A couple of days later, he showed me these red marks where the ticks had bitten him. The red bull's eye rashes are the classic symptoms of Lyme disease. Fortunately, a round of antibiotics quickly cleared the infection. Dog ticks are the ticks that will carry Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. Along with the familiar Lyme disease and Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, ticks can also carry ehrlichosis, heartland virus, and can cause alpha-gal allergy, which can cause a serious allergy to mammal meat. Other diseases include tularemia, and anaplasmosis. There are at least 18 tick-borne pathogens in the U.S. 
So if ticks cause so many problems, what good are they? Ticks are a food source for birds, possums, shrews, lizards, squirrels, chipmunks, chickens, quail, and sometimes spiders. It may seem strange that a parasite can suffer from parasites, but ticks can be affected by parasitic wasps that lay their eggs in them, nematode worms, and some parasitic fungi. We usually think of scorpions as being desert dwellers, but they can also be found in forests too. Where I live in East Tennessee, we have small scorpions, such as this one that a girl brought to science camp a few years ago. Scorpions are also arachnids. The pincers are modified palps using for holding their prey. Spiders inject venom through their fangs. Scorpions deliver venom through their stinger to immobilize their active prey. Scorpions eat insects, spiders, lizards, small snakes, and rodents. The scorpion chews the prey, releasing digestive fluids which break down the tissues into a liquid which the scorpion can then drink. One night while I was photographing moths, I noticed this tiny scorpion-like creature on the sheet. It didn't have wings, so I knew it didn't fly there. A quick check on the internet revealed it was a pseudoscorpion. These tiny creatures are phoretic, like the mites on the patent leather beetle. They too hitch a ride on flying insects. They are only about five millimeters or one tenth of an inch in body length. They are harmless to humans and are actually beneficial because they eat the larvae of clothes moths, dust mites, and carpet beetles in houses. In the wild, they eat bark lice, springtails, remember them, and small flies. Pseudoscorpion means false scorpion. They do not have a tail or stinger, but they do have pinchers, which contain venom glands for subduing their prey. They can be found in leaf litter and humus in the soil, behind bark on trees and under rocks. They can live two to three years as a mature adult. Thank you for watching Spiders Part 4, All in the Family. I hope you will join me in other episodes to learn about other plants and animals. For more information about spiders and their kin, visit my website, EastTennesseeWildflowers.com. Click on the Search All Galleries page and find the Spiders Gallery.